and welcome to the Bell Anthony channel. Today I'm excited about the news that Back to the Future the Musical is coming to Broadway next year. At this point we're still awaiting more official details. The musical, which is based on the 1985 classic movie of the same name, has been going strong in London's West End for over the last 12 months. The musical was adapted for stage by Bob Gale, who also authored the very successful movie starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. Gale was joined in the creation of the show by the other Bob, Bob Zemeckis. Gale and Zemeckis always made it known there is never going to be a Back to the Future Part 4, and that they would not allow a reboot, but they knew the fans would be interested in one of those two ideas. They believed that a musical would work for the movie, especially since the lead character, Marty McFly, is an expiring musical artist, that it would make sense for this to be a musical. Alan Silvestri provides the music for the show as he did for the movie. Glenn Bauer, who wrote my favorite Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror, was brought in to write 22 original songs to go along with the four musical bits that are included from the movie. So now, about the show coming to New York City. Again, we don't know much details yet, but I would expect to hear the full details very soon, since we've been about three months since the teaser has come out. The only extra detail that has come out since the teaser came out in late July. When the first London cast was preparing for a cast change, he producer Colin Ingram provided some comments to Deadline Hollywood. The only thing he would confirm is Broadway legend Roger Bart, who is currently handling the role of Dr. Emmett Brown in London, is in the plans to come back to the States to continue his portrayal of the wacky scientist. Ingram said at the time, they were negotiating with Bart, and Bart was one of the only principal members of the original West End cast to stay on the job when the second cast took over in mid-August. The other nugget that Ingram confirmed is that Martin McFly would be needed to be played by an American. I'm not sure if that's a Broadway union rule or just a marketing rule. But what that means, any chance of Ali Dobson, who was nominated for an Olivier Award in the West End, is ruled out of coming over to America. As for our home theater, nothing has announced. Deadline presented Ingram with a rumor at the time, and Ingram sidestepped it. Due to the venue being one of the major details of any announcement, I am not going to go further into their theater choices. But in the months since it was announced that Back to the Future is coming to America, four major shows, The Phantom of the Opera, Beetlejuice, Come From Away, and the Music Man have announced that they will not be renewing at their present theaters. As for the show itself, and why I'm excited that this is coming to North America, the show has played to a high percentage of crowd over the last 13 months while the theater industry in London is still recovering from the two-year pandemic. Critics have enjoyed the show and they proved that by voting Back to the Future the best new musical at the Olivier Awards this year. Olivier Awards are the West End's equal to the Tony Awards. But even more impressive and important for the producers is that the show took home many awards and fan-voted awards. The biggest win came for the show is what's called the What's On Stage Awards, where it won the Best New Musical, again, on a fan vote, beating out shows such as Disney's Frozen and Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cinderella. Also, the fans made a winner of actor Hugh Coles for his spot-on performance as George McFly. The West End show gets very positive reviews from audience members. Some of them had seen the show numerous times over the last 13 months, including one fan has reported seeing the show 50 times thus far. A fan-created Facebook was created in the UK called Back to the Future, The Musical Fans, a link will be in the description, that now has over 3,600 members. Each post usually says the same thing about the show. Quote, this is the best show I've ever seen, unquote. This includes fans who state Back to the Future was their favorite movie as a kid and fans who actually admit they'd never seen the movie. One aspect that puts the show on fans' top 10 list, other than the familiar beloved story recreated live in person, is the incredible technical effects that the show has. There's an actual DeLorean on stage. Because you don't get to see shots of inside the car like in a movie, the stage version of the car talks. 
But the stage effects, especially in the scenes in which the car leaves 1985, and then when the car returns from 1955, are incredibly done on stage. The technical teams of set design, lighting, and sound each were nominated in the Critics' Olivier Awards, while the same groups were nominated in the Fan Voted What's On Stage Awards, with lighting and sound taking the Fan Vote win. Fans have said that the staging of the show makes you feel immersed in the show. While almost all critics gave the show at least four stars, the only area in which they feel the show disappointed slightly was the original songs on Ballard. The soundtrack has been available for some time, so you can go listen for yourself, but since the show takes place in two different eras, the musical mimics each era, meaning during the 80s part of the show, the musical style has a more 80s feel, and when it goes to the 50s, it switches to a 50s style. Being here in the States, I have not seen the show in person, but I have seen clips from charity shows on YouTube that show some of the numbers, and I have listened to the soundtrack almost daily since it came out, and I feel the numbers are good and catchy. Albeit, after multiple listens. That was the knock from the critics, and a few audience members who were looking for a reason not to, l to like it is that the songs are not memorable and don't move the story along. My reply to that is, and many may say I am dumb, but I don't think really any show with original music has you coming out singing it. Why? Because you're hearing it for the first time. For instance, the most popular musical over the last 10 years is Hamilton. A great show, yes. When I saw it, I didn't come out singing a song. If anything, I was only singing, not going to throw away my shot. That's it. One line. And that's because the line is repeated enough in Act 1, and it's one of the few songs that I actually could understand the lyrics at the time before listening to that soundtrack repeatedly. So, yes, after a couple of listens to songs like Cake, Wherever We're Going, It Works, and For the Dreamers, they will be stuck in your head as well. Not to mention are the two major songs you already know from the movie, Power of Love and Back in Time, which you'll be singing leaving the show, especially back in time as the song acts as the bow song and recording of the bows are encouraged. If you search YouTube, you can find many of the videos of the bows and curtain calls and the back in time performance online and I recommend viewing those videos. As for the other knock on the songs, it doesn't move the story along. Basically that's correct because the story is played out in the acting and the technology. The songs, at least to me, listening to just the soundtrack, tends to give us insight into the feelings of the characters. Or if it was a movie, it would be their close-up. Just like the car had a talk to give us its close-up, on stage, the songs provide the close-up. The biggest example of this is My Utopia, which is George's song, While in the Tree. It works, and Future Boy puts us in Doc Brown's mind. So again, to go back to Hamilton in which the entire show is sung, then in comparison, none of the songs do move it along. Again, it just gives us the insight into their mindset. When it came out that the show was heading to Broadway, there was always the reaction. Why? Why mess with the classic? Doesn't Broadway have any original ideas anymore? Well, it's not messing with the classic. You can always watch your VHS copy of it if you want. But if you want to see your favorite characters live and in person, this would be a great show for you. The writers are not some stiffs that are stealing the characters. The writers create the characters. As for the original ideas, well, now, I think Broadway and movies is out of that. I mean, almost every movie now is a remake, sequel, prequel, or based on some comic book. But I do think it is an original idea to adapt a movie that wasn't originally a musical and convert it to one. Most of the successful musical today are what's called jukebox musicals, or they're based on an artist's individual inventory, such as Tina, Beautiful, and MJ. Anyway, I can't wait for the show to come to America, and I'll be excited to hear all the details when it's released. Been thinking for a while, who would make a good Marty McFly? I can't wait to find out. My guess is details will be coming out very soon if there's going to be a 2023 opening. As for now, 
the fans in London can look forward to October 21st, or what's also known as Back to the Future Day. A surprise special guest will be in attendance on that day, but is yet to be announced. When more details are announced for the Broadway show, we here at About Anything will be back with another video. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe.